think a lot of times when people say you're being too sensitive, what it can boil down to is someone saying, I don't want to sit with my own discomfort that I've actually offended or hurt you. And I would like you to just toughen up instead of me actually have to do my own work and think about why I said the thing that I did and why I'm not okay with the fact that that impacted you. Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Catherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike, and that no matter no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazeness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. You look like sisters. I don't actually know that we super do at the moment. Do you think we do? Put our faces closer together, that makes it. No, I don't feel like we do. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> do we look like sisters? This is Marjorie. She is my younger sister who likes to say she is my older sister. <laughs> and she is also one of our chefs here at Chez Jeunesse. So we work together and we are family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Marjorie is joining me today. Hello. For you two, we're going to do it together. So I have watched the video that Catherine made on reacting to Shane Gillis SNL monologue. I watched it. We've talked about it. I also watched the monologue myself. And then it's been a couple weeks. A couple weeks, yeah. I had the honor of going through and I read all 307 comments underneath Catherine's video and any replies to any of the comments. And I have, I want to say like 15 to 20, I have selected and printed and we're going to just pull them at random and talk about them. Yeah. And react to some people's reactions and comment and discuss. Yes. So. Welcome to Catherine and Marjorie respond to hate comments. <laughs> I have not seen these ahead of time. I've seen a few of the comments like here and there because I don't like to see the notifications at the top of YouTube and so I like click them to X out of the little red bubbles. So I've seen a few just by chance but have not gone through all of them mostly just for my own sake and sanity. My tenderness can't can't handle all of it. But we thought today that we would respond to some of them because some of the longer form comments, not just the like, hate you from Texas or boo, this is sucks, like whatever, but some of the longer form comments oftentimes have still interesting questions or a lot of times there's bias then that's still present in the comment and we thought we could talk about that. So here we go. I have my emotional support smiles. And chocolate chips <laughs> <laughs> along for the along for the ride today as needed. So Catherine has read none of them. I have read all of them. Yeah. We're gonna get to read some of the best of them. Here we go. <sighs> Alright. God, that one's so long! <laughs> I don't want that one. <laughs> okay. Alright. At Canada Place 7489. Comments. With all due respect, why is the Uber pool joke? And oh man, it's not like he's saying there's anything wrong with the diversity in his family. If anything, he's saying he's proud of how diverse his family is. That joke could have been very offensive very easily and he chose not to. If his jokes in this monologue offend you, I pray you can find a way to navigate around the modern world without being offended. We should make it very clear that this is not offensive to refer to diversity as a positive thing lol yes i agree with that yeah i think the part that stuck out to me was how they highlighted navigating the modern world without being offended yeah i think it's hard to know like without this being a back and forth conversation it's hard to know what canada whatever canada place, canada place 74 and uh, 89 
means when they say the modern world because I feel like the implication there is the modern world being a more diverse world which isn't what I felt like I found to be a like that wasn't what my comment was indicating at all I think that what I'm pushing for and promoting is diversity and acceptance and celebration of that so I'm not offended by the modern world if we're saying that the modern world is a more diverse place. If you're saying the modern world is a place where you can say whatever you want to say, like that's where I don't quite understand yeah. even where that comment is coming from. I felt like my reaction, I'd have to go back and listen to his exact joke. I didn't feel like, and this is where it comes down to perception, I think, and understanding of someone's tone. I didn't feel like his tone and his joke was setting that up to be a positive thing. It sounded to me like it was a caricature or a stereotype, which is why I said, oh man, it felt like, oh, you're poking fun at. Like you've re you've reduced the diversity that's in your family and how that could be celebrated to a joke about an Uber pool, which usually I feel like when people are talking about Uber, it's not like, Yay, diversity and celebration. Yeah. So I think that's where to me, and I could have misunderstood what he meant by that, but the tone and the joke felt like he was taking something that was good and that is positive and reducing it down to something that kind of like jabbed at it. It is hard to know, like everybody's perception of what the modern world is, is different. That is a broad term. I would argue that the world we're living in isn't modern enough. Like we haven't progressed enough to yeah. where all people have equal rights and opportunities. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not offended by the modernness of our world. If anything, mm -hmm. I'm offended by the fact that we're not modern enough. Yeah. Unless I'm just yeah. totally misunderstanding what that means. <laughs> I rewatched the monologue this morning, okay. actually. And yeah, his joke was referring to how the diversity in his family comes through adoption and yeah. interracial marriage. Right. And that kind of joining their family like at the dinner table is it would be basically like getting into the wildest Uber pool. Yeah. Um, Maybe that's it. So the word word wild. I don't know if he I don't know if he used that word specifically. You go over to their house, it's like getting in the craziest Uber pool you've ever been. <laughs> It's crazy. But it did draw a picture of like stepping into not like a celebrated or exciting situation necessarily, yeah. but... That's where I think language is really important because if you say stepping into the wildest Uber pool you've ever gotten, to me that indicates like you might feel uncomfortable, it might feel weird, like that to me yeah. feels like synonym when someone's like it was really wild, that that's not usually a positive thing instead of saying like this is the most fun Uber pool you could ever get into or like the best or the like there's other words that if that one had been switched out then it'd be like oh you're talking about this as a positive thing. Anyways. Again, a lot of that comes down to interpretation. So, Canada lover, you are welcome to your interpretation. I perceived it differently, which is why I responded the way that I did. All right, at Chris PVT. Chris PVT. <laughs> says, I wasn't impressed either. The way that he made it seem like it was the audience's fault that they didn't find him funny was interesting to me. Overall, I found it awkward and not very funny with a couple of cringy moments. His style was not my cup of tea either, but I can see how some people would be attracted to that type of comedy. Just like music, comedy is very subjective, which you clearly yep. stated in your response. Also like music, some comedy is going to be inappropriate or offensive. I wonder why those who liked it are so defensive and hateful mm -hmm. in response to your reaction instead of just owning that they enjoy awkward, cringy, offensive comedy. Oh, I like this person. <laughs> I do have to say this was maybe one of two yeah. positive. positive responses that I came across, but I wanted to include one because I did think that he had some good observations and I appreciated that he took the time to offer that Yeah, instead of just hateful words. So. Yeah. It was a thoughtful response and I did appreciate reading what yes. he had to say. I absolutely agree. Comedy is definitely very subjective. I also think that there are scales of comedy in terms of appropriateness or crudeness. Like a lot of times comedy can be geared towards different audiences and some comedy is more adult oriented than others and I think that's fine and that's fair. The intent in responding to it was to address some of the bias that is presented through it. It was an opportunity 
opportunity for education. And it's also totally fair for me to say that wasn't funny to me and for someone else to say, well, it was funny to me. One of my friends texted me afterwards and said something about a lot of times maybe people recognizing that there's a difference of opinion and wanting to enter into that conversation, but not knowing how to give their opinion without becoming defensive. And so I think that there's a chance that if someone found it really funny and then I'm here saying, actually, I find it problematic. Instead of getting curious about the feelings that that may stir up, it's like, oh, I need to defend why I thought it was funny because I'm feeling pricked or insulted then personally by the fact that you're calling out some of this bias. Yeah. And I just thought, they kind of, that was kind of a good burn there at the end, though. I appreciate that. It was like, polite, 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 and a little bit of at the end, <laughs> which is funny. The toss in there. Yeah. <laughs> It actually kind of makes me feel a little stressed with the neighbors are on the floor. If you haven't seen my video on OCD, you should go watch. You should go watch that. Put it up for you later. I know, but it's there. It's there in the moment. Oh, 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 7708. I hope that I'm pronouncing all of these correctly. I apologize if I'm not. Comedy means taking the uncomfortable truths and making them more digestible but entertaining. I understand yep. it's not your cup of tea, but I take things generally, especially jokes, not as seriously or as personal attacks. I personally view comedy as a sort of forum. Nothing should be omitted for anyone's sake. Yes, Shane most definitely was implying that people with Down syndrome tend to be less intelligent and socially aware than the average person, asterisk because they are. It's just a fact. My father has no fingers on his right hand due to a farm accident when he was a teenager. We don't pretend he can play the piano or type well. We sometimes make jokes about him being short-handed or other similar references to his missing fingers. When I was growing up and required his help, he would tell me the problem was I had too many fingers. Maybe try not being offended on someone else's behalf for a change. It's okay to include people with disabilities in comedy. Strange as it may seem, some people feel ostracized when comedians don't make jokes about them as if they were just too precious and fragile to take a joke or two aimed at their direction. I'm glad this one was in there because this was one I was actually curious about. Some, my mom, I had our mom. <laughs> we have the same mom. Our mom. <laughs> also um, my mom. Yeah was talking about this one and was asking me earlier this week what I thought about it. Okay, so I like the first statement. I'm looking at it because I can't remember it all off the top of my head. But comedy means taking the uncomfortable truths and making them more than digestible but entertaining. I think that that can be one of the things that comedy does, but I don't think comedy is isolated to that, right? Or people yeah. don't always use comedy in that yeah. way. That's not the I, only yeah. way that people use comedy. Is it to often make... does include taking uncomfortable topics or truths sure. or things that are going on in the world and trying to make them digestible for their audience, but that is not the sole purpose of comedy. Yes. A lot of people's comedy doesn't. Yeah, include... and I do think that some people actually use comedy to do the opposite, that they're taking uncomfortable truth and making them more extreme or drawing attention to them, you're kind of enlarging a truth rather than making it more digestible. So I don't think everyone's intent always in comedy is to make it more easily received. I think sometimes people use comedy for the shock value of it all. I've definitely been to some stand-up and some open mic sessions where I'm like, whoa, <laughs> of all the ways you could have said that, that was probably the most <laughs> graphic or obscene. Like, we went as far as we could go, like we're pushing the envelope rather than trying to make it digestible. So I like when comedy is used this way, but I don't think that it always is. And then I think for me, the conversation that I would want to have from this is that there's still bias in this comment because we're taking something that could be true and stating it as fact, which is part of the issue that I had with the monologue in the first place when he says he's implying that people with Down syndrome tend to be less intelligent and socially aware than the average person and then says because they are it's just a fact 
but I don't think that that's always true. I know it's not always true. So that's still a bias. The bias is that people with Down syndrome are not as smart and they're not as socially aware as a non-disabled or someone without Down syndrome would be. And in some cases that could be true and could be a fact, but it's not going to be true in every case. So we're making this grand sweeping statement over Down syndrome as a whole. Like he's comparing his father who has no fingers to every single person in the world with Down syndrome. And that's one very specific incident or person versus an entire population of people. And you don't know that. You don't know every person with Down syndrome. Like you can't make that sweeping. You could say every person with Down syndrome has an extra chromosome. That would be a fact but you can't say every person with Down syndrome is less intelligent than someone without Down syndrome, or he's in the average person, which then that's still bias because then that put, points back to an idea that there's a norm or a standard or an average for a person, which is where neurodiversity tries to push against. I definitely think it's okay to include people with disabilities in comedy. I don't think that they need to be left out. Some of my favorite comedians are disabled comedians and they bring disability into their comedy all the time. And I think it's hilarious, but I do think there's a difference in a disability disabled person making a joke about themselves and then a non-disabled person making jokes about disabled people. But especially if those jokes are reinforcing negative bias that the world already has about disability instead of bringing light or awareness to something that other people haven't thought of before. Mm -hmm. We spoke a little bit about this one earlier mm -hmm. this week and I think that was one thing that had stood out to me about this comment in particular that I do appreciate the fact that he took the time to give a personal example and how yeah. comedy has been helpful in his family in interacting with a person that has a physical disability. That I think is where it's different between making that distinction between the comedy about people with Down syndrome and his father who has a physical disability. His father is somebody that he has a personal relationship with. They have established what is comfortable for them, where the comedy is comfortable and helpful and a good thing in their family and I'm sure that there's also probably a line for them at some point yeah. but like they're able to have that interaction and dialogue because that's a personal relationship and then making comedic jokes about an entire group of people or an entire population the entire group of people that has down syndrome is different because you don't have a personal relationship with every person that has that disability so it's not necessarily fair to speak on their behalf as yeah. if you do. Which I would add is not what I'm here to do either. I'm not a disabled person so my perspective and my lens is not coming from that a personal disability experience but rather someone who is in the field of disability advocacy and as a non-disabled person want to challenge other non-disabled humans to evaluate the bias that we may be holding around disability which is why I chose this video. So it wasn't me saying, I'm here to speak on behalf of everyone with Down syndrome or everyone with a disability yeah. about how this is, this is problematic. It's me as a non-disabled person saying, hey, this is bias that I'm recognizing in this video. And I think we should be talking about it because not enough people are talking about it. And if we don't talk about it, then that bias just continues to go unchecked. All right, you wanna do one more maybe? And then wrap it up. I know this is not all of them, but that's okay. I feel like. At Stupa 2000, a lot of people with a disability, in parentheses, including myself, don't want to be excluded. I want comedians to write jokes about us. You're the problem for wanting us excluded. I would agree that I would be part of the problem if what I was saying is that I wanted disability or people with disabilities to be excluded from comedy, which is not what I said. I would like negative bias to be <laughs> excluded yeah. from comedy for anyone. Like, I don't think that that's really fair or utilizing comedy to its best if we're perpetuating negativity or dislike or hatred or whatever towards towards any person. So I'm definitely not anti-disability being part of comedy as a topic or anti-talk about disability or disabled humans within the scope of comedy. This was to say I thought the way that he did it by and large perpetuated things that aren't true about disability or not always true about disability mm -hmm. in the world just kind of goes back to I think language is powerful I think comedy is powerful I think both can be used really positively to impact thought 
and consideration and transformation. And I didn't feel like this monologue was an example of that, which is why we talked about it. Mm -hmm. But for sure, I would agree with that. It should not be excluded. It needs to be part of it. And I am pro, definitely pro disability being talked about positively in all spheres, including comedy. Mm -hmm. That's actually one of the videos that we have coming up is to respond to a disabled comedian who brings disability into her comedy all the time. That's kind of at the center of it. So, yeah. You were the one who actually watched the video, so I can say I didn't do that. But if you feel like I did, I'd be interested in your thoughts. That I was asking for disability to be excluded. I didn't perceive that you were asking for it to be wiped out of comedy, but that it's like asking comedians to be thoughtful in the way that they are including it in their comedy because ultimately they're the ones that are sitting down and taking the time to write this content out and they have the ability to write something really powerful and influential and funny right. and poignant and that can reach a really large audience. So I think it was more, more the takeaway that I got from it was holding people accountable for the power that their words can have and being able to if you know by all means like including yeah. disability in your comedy but being able to do that in a way that is also thoughtful and isn't insensitive yeah making broad sweeping statements or continuing to like push bias into your audiences and some of that too like there's additional sensitivity that I feel because of the inequity and inequality that there still is mm -hmm. especially within disability hiring and employment that I feel like in the world of comedy there's a little bit more leeway that I am willing to give when the subject of the joke holds a lot of privilege and rights I think part of why this hit a personal note, like this monologue hit a personal note with me, is that my work is to advocate for equality within disability employment. Mm -hmm. And there's a really big unemployment gap in the disability community. And so then when you have someone stand up who's making jokes about how people with disabilities, or in this case in particular, people with Down syndrome, are really slow and not good at their jobs, it just makes that fight harder. I think there's a lot of humor that we experience here at work mm -hmm. on a daily basis because we have a really neurodiverse team and there's a way that we talk about that as a team and that we even talk about that in workshops that I think excite people and excite our team and make them feel like they want to push deeper into this work and the work of advocating for equal employment rights for people with disabilities to include more people with disabilities into their workforce versus this idea that including people with disabilities is going to make your business worse, which is what it felt like it was being stated. That's where I'm like, yes, let's talk about it, but let's talk about it in a way that like pushes culture forward instead of keeps us stuck in the same patterns which are holding people back. Indigenous teammates, your keyword this week is baguette. Final what thoughts. are your final thoughts? I think that there were two main things that I took away from reading the 300 comments. Thank you for reading 300 and I had a really fun Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> we both had like I worked on a puzzle for two hours and you I read comments on the YouTube video. video. Um, so it really was living really it up. Good. <laughs> for me. I would say the two overarching themes that I saw were that people were really not happy that you're a Trevor Noah fan. I saw something about um, that, which I that was like if I could do like a diagram that was like one of the top uh, comments, and then one why of the is that? Other... Did anyone explain that, or do people just um, don't? It would... They don't like him, or they find it problematic that I do. <laughs> why? And then the other was why? Well, why? There was not honestly, and not a lot of explanation for it. Like a lot of okay. the comments that I saw were the fact that she's a Trevor Noah fan tells me everything I need to know about her. Or if Trevor Noah is your kind of comedian, then like this is going to be lost on you. Those <laughs> kinds of things. So because I like intelligent comedy, <laughs> then the other stuff is going to be lost on me. 
I see the game we're playing. Um, the other theme that I picked up from a lot of the comments was you're too sensitive. Like you're, yeah. you're too sensitive to comedy. And that was something that I kind of took some time to think over too. If I'm too sensitive? Night. No, no, just sensitivity, I think. Oh towards comedy in general. I think there's been a lot of conversation over like, in comedy, like where does it push too far or are people just being overly sensitive? Right. And I think that with sensitivity comes mindfulness for the people that your words or actions are affecting. And mm -hmm. so like as our culture has grown some and leaned into being more accepting of different people groups, there's a little bit more mindfulness about the words that we say that are impacting those people. And so there's a higher level of sensitivity and that comes with comedy. You know, you may mm -hmm. see that jokes or comedy specials that were made or written 20 years ago, even like sitcoms or TV shows, yeah. you know, that we say like haven't aged well or don't hold up today. Like that comedy doesn't always translate now because we have a greater mindfulness for the people that those jokes are affecting. So I think, yeah, I think that that sensitivity is a good thing overall if it's paired with that mindfulness and if you're able to take that mindfulness and like think about why the comedy might bother you, why the joke bothers mm -hmm. you, use that to look at your own biases, look at somebody else's biases, have constructive conversation from it. I think overall that being sensitive to comedy can be a really good thing. Like you can get a lot more out of the comedy in general and you can also, you can appreciate it more and you can get more out of it because you can learn from it as well. Yeah, I won't apologize for being sensitive. It's one of the things that I like most about myself. And that's been something that I've learned to, to claim as part of who I am as an adult and really as an adult in my 30s because it definitely was something that I felt like I was criticized for or encouraged to toughen up or to have a thicker skin or whatever it is growing up that I was too sensitive. And I think a lot of times when people say you're being too sensitive, what it can boil down to is someone saying, I don't, like, I don't want to sit with my own discomfort that I've actually offended or hurt you. And I would like you to just toughen up instead of me actually have to do my own work and think about why I said the thing that I did and why I'm not okay with the fact that that impacted you. I'm still responsible for all of my own feelings and all of my own responses. So I hold myself accountable to being sensitive and how, how I handle that and what I do with it. But I do think that the sensitivity that I hold in the world and towards other people is one of my biggest advantages, especially in the work that I do, not just in disability employment and advocacy, but in hospitality and owning a restaurant. I'm so sensitive to the feelings of people around me. And a lot of times that's why I'm tired at the end of the day when I go home because I we work in an open kitchen and I can see and I actually like feel how my guests are feeling while they're in my space and they're experiencing the food. And so I'm very aware of like, this person's feeling uncomfortable right now. This person is waiting for their food. Like I'm aware of all of that. And I think then being able to push into and tend to the needs of the people in my team or in our space and encouraging my team to do that too is part of what sets our restaurant apart in terms of service and people leaving feeling cared for. So I'm proud of being sensitive. I'm glad that I am. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> guest guest yeah. YouTuber. Like, I didn't even have to break into my smile. I was all prepped with all my snacks just in case it really started getting in my feels. Probably if I read the rest of these, I would. But I'm gonna take the rest you of these. did a good job picking the cards. Okay. Thanks for being here. We appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> He's not coming to Kings River. He is coming to Winston. Coming to Winston. What I am excited about. <laughs> I wanted to do some more research because I don't feel like I hear people hating on him. Like of all the things that I said in the video, that's the least. Mm -hmm. I like that said that in a passing comment. I did not think that that would be the thing that people would be like <laughs> about. <laughs>